Awesome. And we are back again. I am here with Valerio. Um, he's going to be sharing with us uh, a, a quick talk about how you uh, streamline your decision making process with all of your stakeholders in mind. But I won't say too much. Valerio has a lot of experience at all stages of the uh, tech industry, seed all the way to, through to big tech. So Valerio, I'm going to let you take it away. Thank you, Precious. Uh, thanks, everyone. I'm very excited to be here. Uh, it's been a really a, a, an exciting couple of days, so hopefully last day will be just as good. Um, so about myself, I've been in and around tech for most of my career, predominantly in product um, at companies like uh, Monzo, Facebook, and Google. Um, and right now, I'm actually uh, starting a new company, um, it, which is still in stealth mode within the climate tech space, which is very exciting for me. Um, and what I'm here to talk about is lean decision making. Um, and so one of the key aspects of being a product manager uh, is driving clear and robust decision making. And that often involves multiple functions within the business uh, and all, all of them having competing priorities. Actually, that can really be said about literally any role uh, within the company where their job is to facilitate decision making. And so one of the things that I've been really passionate about <clears throat> during my career was really to find, develop and, uh, and, and scale frameworks that uh, worked well within small teams and then larger teams and small organizations, large organizations. Um, but just to really put structure around how we do things. Um, and so chances are that, you know, you're quite familiar uh, to, with a framework like this, pros and cons. And so a common pitfall in decision making is evaluating decisions based on a binary criteria like pros and cons or benefit impact. And so there's, you know, benefit cost and uh, impact effort. Um, and so if you're familiar with these frameworks, you're probably familiar also with the feeling of being in a room where, you know, everyone has an opinion, every option has valid counterpoints, and there's just not movement, like there's no decision reached. And so uh, if there's one thing I want you to take away from the, from the talk is that decisions are rarely based on binary criteria. And so using a framework such as this, such as the ones that we saw before, uh, is actually trying to uh, make a binary uh, sort of uh, distinction between various criteria. So some of the reasons why, uh, you know, those criteria, those frameworks don't work really well uh, is that firstly, if you're not evaluating carefully all of the competing criteria when you're making a decision, you may end up with a suboptimal decision, which is usually a compromise rather than objective evaluation of everything that needs to be considered to make that decision. Also, more often than not, a key criteria for decision may be, uh, you know, a drawback for one option and a benefit for another. And so it's hard to correctly evaluate that criteria if it appears in both columns. So here's a very, very basic, simple example. And if you see in the, for option B, speed to market is a pro um, because we can roll out straight away to 100%. Um, but, it, you know, the same concept of how fast we can launch is a con for option A, which is we have one week until Christmas to launch this feature. Uh, and so it's quite hard to draw the line whether sp speed, of, uh, speed to market is overall uh, something we want higher or lower. Also, the more functions you get involved uh, and the more the criteria you're going to have. And I think this is particularly true for product teams that generally have to interface with a lot of different teams, you know, engineering, sales, legal, uh, customer service, marketing. And so your engineering team may care more about resilience. Uh, your sales team may care more about speed to market. And then you have the legal team that may prefer a solution that doesn't actually require the TNCs to be updated and so on. So how can you bring all of these competing priorities into just a simple binary classification? Um, most people tend to shy away from conflict. Uh, obviously, nobody likes conflict. But what I'm sure you like even less is sort of for a conflict to arise during a key meeting and derailing the discussion completely to the point that you can't reach a decision. And so with binary criteria, it's harder for your counterparts, your stakeholders, to highlight their own trade-offs, their own concerns, and their own recommendations. Simply, simply put, their cost-benefit analysis is going to look very different than yours. And so another, another sort of bonus nested in here is that this kind of framework, pros and cons, or cost-benefit, et cetera, makes it really hard to spot, spot any Trojan horse. And what I mean by that is, you know, nested in all of these bullet points, you find 
that our system actually won't handle the expected increase in traffic. And that's going to be true whether we launch to 100% today or if we do a slow rollout, because eventually we will get to 100%. And so these kind of things are hard to spot if you're just trying to simply analyze one of the different options um, as a pro and cons list. Um, finally, you know, uh, I'm a big believer that context switching is generally a waste of time. And I try to avoid as much as possible. And so when you use a framework like this, you begin with your option one, you discuss the costs and the benefits, then you move to option two, you repeat the discussion, and then somebody comes up with a question, which is about what about option one? Does it have the same legal complexity to implement? And then you have to switch back to option one's costs, right? And so you're constantly switching context between the options because you don't have an easy way to compare them on the same exact criteria. So what I'm trying to do today is introducing traffic lights. Um, and so uh, I, I know Devin tried to credit me with this framework, but actually this is a framework that uh, sort of has been around for a while. Um, I probably just formalized a little bit for, for this talk and, and, and internally my teams. Um, but it, it's quite a straightforward and it's quite a structured and clear method uh, to decision making. And this is especially useful when multiple teams or functions may disagree on that decision. And so there's four key steps. Um, firstly, we're going to select the criteria. Then we're going to present each of the options. We're going to create the traffic lights. And finally, we're going to summarize and recommend. Now, so to help visualize the framework, uh, I'm not going to pick a product decision. I'm actually going to evaluate different options to, to keep my dog engaged and happy throughout the day while I have to work full time. And he is a big fan of traffic lights. He's always diligently waiting at the traffic lights. I'm sure he'll appreciate all the effort that went into this decision. And you know, this is Robin, uh, a cute moment uh, to lift up the, the talk. But essentially, we're looking for a solution to allow Robin to burn energy during the, during the day uh, while I also have to work full time. And so as mentioned before, uh, disagreements often comes from conflicting priorities or dimensions uh, that a team or a function may, may have with regards to the decision rather than the actual options that are being considered. And so the first step is really about consolidating all of these different dimensions into a set of clear criteria that we are going to use to make a decision. And so to choose the right criteria, firstly, uh, you want to frame them as questions, not as one words. So visibility may mean different things to various functions or various teams. And so a better criteria could be, um, can our team build it with current stuffing? Or do we have the right skills on the team to do this? Extreme clarity is key to succeed here. Um, second tip is to number them. And so I can't really stress this enough, but this will make your meetings 15 times smoother. I'm still trying to statistically prove this. And so far, it's only anecdotal evidence. But it really allows you to easily reference the criteria you're discussing, uh, what you're discussing whenever you're reviewing all the options. Uh, next up is you want to define what better and worse mean. And for example, if it's cost, I assume the higher the worse, right? If it's revenue impact, the higher the better and so on. But these are straightforward. So what about um, number of partners? Like we may want to reduce the number of partners to engage with, uh, or we may want to maximize them because that will increase our revenue. So don't assume that everyone will understand how to evaluate your criteria without you properly explaining it in a nice legend. Um, next up is being inclusive. So people and generally teams involved in the decision-making process should really feel like their voices are being heard. And that means including criteria that cover their concerns and what they value. So you want to make sure that you know, you're giving space to everyone involved by asking them what are the key criteria they would consider to make this decision. And so you can then make sure that those criteria are part of your final set. And so that's going to be super important. But uh, sort of nested in this is avoid too many criteria. Too many criteria can be overkill. And you may need to consolidate some of them uh, when in the case there are some that are overlapping. Um, <clears throat> Next up is being, it's being quite uh, brutal about prioritizing the criteria. So one obvious shortcoming of this method is that assuming you're assuming that all criteria are created equal. And it's really the case, right? Like inevitably, some criteria may have more weight than others. And this is your chance to align that prioritization for everyone to see. So you could try listing them by priority or just adding some descriptive words to it. But whatever you choose, make sure your assumptions are clearly stated for everyone to see and understand. 
Finally, this is the most important bit, is testing them. So you want to ask the question, if we had an option that would satisfy all of these criteria, would we all agree on that option? If the answer is no, then you may need to iterate on the criteria until you're actually covering all the, uh, all the critical dimensions. Um, so this is what a slide uh, output slide will look like to summarize all the criteria. And you can see that I'm listing out a number in all the different criteria. And so an, an example is how much energy will Robin burn? And so I add an explanation of that criteria. And so in this case, the more, the more energy they can burn, the better. Um, and how much will it cost me? There's like an interesting point there, which is we want the cost to fit within my current budget. And that's a non-negotiable condition. So that gives more color as to how we're thinking about the various criteria. Second step in the traffic light method is to present each of the options. Now you might find yourself evaluating different, many different options, or you may have just one and struggling to find alternatives. So we're gonna go through some tips on how to best handle this. Firstly, you want to summarize the option with a short name. This should give a really good overview of what the option is. A bad example is feature update, right? A good example is ship feature X to 10% of users. Uh, secondly, you want to number them, actually letter them, not number them. We've numbered the criteria. So now we're gonna letter the, the options. So this, when you'll see the final output will allow you to really easily cross-reference the matrix that you're gonna have uh, and uh, point towards uh, point towards a clear cell uh, for easy discussion. Um, you want to also be able to provide context on each of the options, right? So if I were one of the key decision makers in the room, what would I need to know about option A uh, to carefully evaluate it, right? And so some problems may require longer and more detailed explanations. Others can be summarized in a short slide. You know, this changes a lot depending on how much context the key decision makers already have about the problem and how maybe removed they are from your team. Um, <clears throat> so it's important that you can provide the right level of context on each of the options. Finally, if you have one, only one option, my advice is just to take the opposite of that option and then find a middle of ground. So even a simple yes or no decision can then be boiled down to, you know, two different options that can be evaluated against the exact same criteria you've chosen. And then you can find a third one by sort of thinking about what a middle ground might look like. Just, you know, my advice is to get creative on this. And so here are what the options are uh, for our Robin case study. Uh, firstly, we could hire a dog walker. Um, that, you know, there's a little explanation of what happens. They, you know, they take Robin out twice, uh, so, so for two hours a day. Um, I could enroll Robin in doggy daycare. They will pick him up at 8 a.m., drop him off at 5 p.m. Um, and finally, I could just make more time for walks, right? So just blocking times in my calendar and take him out on a daily basis. Step three is finally the uh, traffic light. So you've got your criteria, you've got your options. Now it's time to put them together. The most important tip here is that three colors only. So have you ever, if you've ever seen a traffic light with more than three colors, please let me know. I'd love to see it. I'm pretty, pretty much of a geek when it comes to mobility, uh, but you know that would be very confusing. And so colors are a helpful way to easily visualize the key points that you're trying to make. And there's a general assumption in what each color means, right? So you have green for good, amber, yellow for average, and then red for bad. And so <clears throat> this, this is a way to standardize how each criteria should be evaluated by the various stakeholders. Secondly, you want to be able to explain why you chose color X for that particular uh, option and criteria. And so if the question is, can our team build it with current staffing? You know, your answer is just, if your answer is just no, that's you know, not gonna help anyone else make a decision. So you want to elaborate in a concise way why you chose that color. And so an example, uh, that a better example for this is, our team is already maxed out on priority X, specifically on the front end engineering side. So here's how a traffic light looks like uh, for option A. Uh, and I'm not gonna go through this very much in detail, uh, but you can see sort of there's a clear color coding, there's a clear explanation as to why we gave that particular color for each of the criteria. And so, you know, how much will it cost me? That's like 10, $15 a day, and that's within my budget. Um, and uh, the others are sort of like somewhat average. <clears throat> uh, and I've done the same for option B, and then again for option C. And so we finally get to uh, step four, 
Uh, and this slide that I'm going to present is really where you should be spending most of your discussion time, right? So if you follow all of the steps above and in, in the slides just before that, we sh that I showed you, you should really find yourself with a slide that visually gives an easy way to understand what the various trade-offs are, how each criteria may conflict with one another, and what the recommended option is. Uh, so firstly, make a recommendation. So if all of the teams involved have reached an agreement on what, on what a recommendation is, then that's great, yay. But you know, make that very explicit. Uh, and this will allow your key decision makers to maybe just ratify the decision when in agreement. Um, but if there's an, a conflict and on which option to, you, know, you should pursue, then you should flag it. And so an example is team X recommends option A, team Y recommends option C. And that helps really understand where the sticking points in the discussion and decision making are for the key decision makers. Uh, lastly, don't be scared to live update the, the slides. And so you may uncover new information during one of your meetings, the decision meeting, uh, and that's going to affect how you evaluate all of your options, right? And so the worst thing you can say is, thank you, but let's keep looking at the slides. Uh, like, you know, we can change them later. Edit in real time, update the colors if necessary. Um, this will actually make your, your deck useful uh, and help you drive uh, towards a decision. So here's how our summary and recommendation slide might look like. And so where you can see, you know, while option B addresses most of our concerns, there's a lot of green there, the cost is too prohibitive. And we said at the beginning when we looked at the various criteria that the cost criteria was a non-negotiable. It just had to fit within our budget. And so our recommended option is therefore option A as a trial for one month, and then we can revisit the decision. In this way, we're very clearly explaining why um, you know we made the, why we've come up with that particular recommendation, uh, and it really helps the the discussion going forward. So summarizing um, this sort of this this framework that I've used is step one: selecting all of your criteria. Step two: presenting each of the options that you have. Step three, combining them together and traffic light it. And step four, uh, summarize and rec make a recommendation. So hopefully this framework will help you, you know, make decision in an easy and structured way. And, that's and it's also going to bring everyone, you know, all of your stakeholders along the, that journey with you. Uh, what's next? Uh, it's how do you embed this framework in your ongoing process? And so I've got a couple of tips for that that I've followed over time. Firstly, keep track of every decision made. Right? You want to have a clear link to you know, the relevant deck that you use to traffic light the, the, the various options. Uh, and make sure that you're clearly labeling when a decision has been reached and sort of like what the discussion was, et cetera. And you can use it as a reference. So whenever there's a, a new stakeholder or you need to revisit the decision, uh, that actually is a super helpful uh, document to pull out. Secondly, I recommend setting up a decisions meeting on a recurring basis. Um, and so this could be called anything, right? Uh, so sometimes we called it a product council. Uh, sometimes we called it uh, a actual decision meeting in a team once. But um, that is a meeting that you have on a recurring basis. Uh, and you use a master deck to collate all of the decisions ahead of the meeting. And so if you're managing a large project, this will actually you know, help you with making frequent decisions um, and in a more structured and rigorous way. And so the standardization really helps make relevant stakeholders you know, take multiple decisions with consistency and ease. So imagine having back to back to back a few of these slides all in the same framework, summarizing the decision, making a clear recommendation, uh, and it, it's actually a very straightforward way to, um, to aid the decision making. Finally, you want to get your stakeholders to, to adopt the framework themselves. And so this process will become uh, like easier and easier over time if also your key stakeholders are using that framework to surface their own decisions to you. And so that's really all about exponential impact. Uh, and so one of the things that I got most excited about at Facebook is when my policy, product policy team came to me with a deck full of traffic lights uh, to explain to me some of the upcoming policy changes that they were proposing. Uh, and I call that a huge win for me. Um, so <clears throat> I think that that was in the end for me. Um, and so I very much look forward to all the questions. And uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Seed Camp, as well, for having me. Uh, so 
over to you for questions. Hi. I am here to help facilitate those questions. Um, thank you so much. That was really great. I guess it would be um, good to know from your side in particular, like what, where have you, um, what, how have you found it best to present all of the options when it comes to the actual um, traffic light uh, process? How do you mean, sorry? In terms of like when you're presenting all of the options to your, to your team, you know, how have you found yeah. what has been the most effective, sorry, process of doing that? Um, so if I'm understanding correctly, so it's sort of like, how do you make sure that you're going through all of the various options and that the team understands them all very clearly? And so actually this preparing this deck together with your team is a really good way to make sure that you're also on the same page within your specific team, right? Um, if you all agree that that's the best way to summarize sort of uh, the, the, the trade-offs and the, the challenges and making the recommendation, that actually helps ensure a high degree of alignment uh, within your own team. Awesome, awesome. Uh, and I think there's also one within the event chat uh, just here as well. Um, let me just pull that up because there are many, many different places. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh give me one second yeah okay so it says have you ever had to mediate misalignment on choosing criteria like when different parties have very different expectations yeah so uh, this is a really good question and actually you'll find that most of the misalignment will not come from uh sort of the choosing the criteria and which ones are the criteria that are important, but it will come from actually how do you assess something against that criteria. And so there will be teams that may disagree with you saying that that's um, a green versus a red. Uh, mm. But generally speaking, when, the more inclusive you are uh, in, in getting everyone's criteria on board and sort of uh, collating them in the right way, uh, the better it is. I did talk about one of the fallacies, which is like having a hundred <laughs> criteria. So I wouldn't mm. recommend more than like five. Five. Um, but it's usually like relatively, um, that, that, that's usually a relatively good number uh, to make a decision. If you see that you have too many criteria, then maybe uh, there is an opportunity to break down the decision into smaller pieces. And I think that's sometimes something that is also really important. You might end up trying to make a very big decision and trying to <laughs> oversimplify it. Uh, when as in reality, you might be able to break that down into multiple decisions that get you the same way. Awesome, that makes a lot of sense. Just gonna uh, see if there are any more questions within the chat. I, I can see two in the stage. In the stage, here we go. Honestly, there's so many different spaces and places. <laughs> Here we go. Yes. So, yeah, one from Tim. OK, so how do you decide which decisions are relevant enough to use in the framework? Yeah. So um, I would say any decision that has uh, any decision that is beyond just your own team is definitely a really good candidate. Uh, and so sometimes this could be a, a launch decision or it can be an update. Um, but it can also be sort of a, uh, a test, like how do, how do we want to run this test? Um, and so if there's more than one team that is impacted by this decision, this framework will really help you. Mm. Sometimes it's good if you have a very large team uh, and many different functions within the team. So you might have, so at Facebook, I, my team had data scientists, uh, had research scientists, had uh, software engineers, ML engineers, designers, and policy makers. And all of that actually made it very complex already. And so we tend to use this framework quite frequently uh, because it helps get clarity also within the team. Okay, cool, great. And then the next question then is, you know, would you say any decision can or should be taken with this framework or is there a limit? Like, if yes, how would you go about reorganizing that? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think, you know, I. I think this is a very similar question. It's sort of like, is there like a line below and above which you say this decision isn't worth uh, leveraging the framework for? Um, so I, what my advice is, is just to test it out. So the worst that, that can happen is that 
you've been very clear to yourself and to a couple more people on how you made the decision. Um, it's also once you start trying it out, there's actually very little uh, overhead in doing it. Once you have your own framework set up and you know the template, it actually makes it you know, very, very, very easy and quick to do. Um, and so I would say it's all, almost always worth the, the effort. Oh, okay, yeah, try everything. And then if it doesn't work, well, at least you know. 100%. No, thank you yeah. so much for that. I guess, yeah, that's pretty much, uh, yeah, that's, those are some really great insights. Do you have any parting words for the, uh, for the audience before we uh, let you go back into your day? Yeah, um, I would say also based on the questions, I, I think the most uh, important point that I want you to walk away with is that this should be a collaborative effort. Um, mm -hmm. And so the more you can be inclusive and the more you can uh, bring the other stakeholders into the decision making and to the, you know, building it out through the framework, the the easier and the smoother the process of making the decision will be. And so you'll make sure that the, all the right criteria are taken into account, that uh, all the right voices have been heard, but also that they've had a chance to chime in into how to best evaluate various options and even like suggest other options, right? Um, and so if you then go into a decision meeting and then maybe there's like VPs or, you know, there's CEO or whatever, depending on the size of your company, um, it all, make for a much more constructive discussion because everyone has had their chance to to contribute to the to the decision making progress mm. process mm. and yeah i guess because team buying is so important people have to feel heard at the end of the day exactly. awesome source well thank you so much for joining us today um i'm sure people your um your contact details in terms of social media have been shared in the chat so people do feel free to reach out um and uh -huh. we'll be back in a few moments uh, with our final speaker of Product Summit. So I'm just gonna stop broadcasting right now. Thank you, Precious. Thanks, everyone. Thanks so much.